Hi everybody, this is Gad Saad. Hope uh, you've had a good week. Earlier today, I uh, posted a, an article on my Psychology Today column, Homo Consumericus. Uh, the title of the article is How I Met My Wife. And so I thought I would read it for you here. Here we go. Hope you enjoy it. So, title is How I Met My Wife, Celebrating 20 Years Together. Yesterday was a momentous day in my personal life. My wife and I celebrated our 20th anniversary. In a future article, I might share the secret recipe for a successful, long-lasting marriage. But for now, let me discuss the genesis of our story, or how I met my wife. It is a tale of the magical serendipity of life. You ready? Here we go. The story begins more than 20 years ago. I was exercising at the gym when an individual passed me by and uttered, Hey, Professor, another gentleman whom I had never met overheard the salutation and approached me. He introduced himself and asked what my areas of expertise were. Once I explained that some of my areas of interest included consumer psychology and psychology of decision making, he wondered if I might be interested in delivering a series of in-house executive seminars as he was the founder and president of a telemarketing firm. The course would constitute six or seven weekly modules covering a broad range of consumer re relevant topics. The course would not involve any grading. It was a form of executive lifelong learning program. Luckily for me, I eventually agreed to his offer even though I was not terribly pleased with the remuneration. But then again, some things are more important than money as we'll shortly find out. I showed up for my first corporate seminar on that fateful day with much anticipation. I had never taught a course in such a setting. As the elevator door opened on the floor where I was scheduled to deliver the course, I was greeted in an impromptu manner by a woman who accompanied me to the venue. The woman in question had recently been promoted to a human resources managerial position and as such was eligible to attend my seminars. As the story goes, she was not very pleased to have to waste her Saturdays attending some likely boring lectures. I thank the cosmos that it was compulsory for her to attend. Around the time of my second or third seminar, I had become ill with a nasty bout of bronchitis. During the break, the elevator woman returned with an unsolicited cup of hot tea for me. I thought that this was a very considerate and sweet gesture but I did not think anything else of it. I had my professional face on. Over the next several weeks, the woman in question exhibited a lot of interest in the taught material, which I thought was great to see, but as I later found out, this was all a grand ruse. I was being pulled into her web of love. I completed my contract and never thought that I'd see the elevator lady again. That said, I eventually heard through some mutual acquaintances that the elevator lady was interested in getting to know me. For our first evening get-together, I ended up going to watch a movie with her and one of her friends. At the time, my father had had a health scare, and as such, I was carrying a pager should an emergency arise. This was prior to the era of ubiquitous cell phones. As I bid her good night, subsequent to viewing the movie, we playfully agreed on a set of pager codes that she might send me to express specific sentiments, one of which was 222, to express, I'm thinking of you. I had hardly taken 20 or 30 steps away from her when my pager rang with the 222 alert. Several days later, she showed up to my office with a basket of goodies for an indoor picnic. I was cooked. The rest is history. Fast forward 20 years, I returned yesterday to that exact same theater to watch a movie with the elevator lady, my wife. Had I not gone to the gym on that day, had an individual not greeted me with, hey, professor, with an earshot of another person who approached me to inquire about my areas of expertise, my wife and I might have never met. Such is the beauty of life. Every moment has the potentiality to be life-altering in endless, unknowable, and magical ways. As a testament of how much I love my wife, the readers might be interested in this earlier article. I'll put the, it'll be part of the end of this clip. 
So as a testament of how much I love my wife, the readers might be interested in this earlier article where I recounted that I was willing, what I was willing to do to recover my lost wedding ring. Interestingly, since I wrote that article, I came close to losing the ring a second time. I should perhaps tell that story at some point. There you have it. That's how I met my wife. Yesterday we celebrated our 20th anniversary. Uh, many of you wrote me lovely words. Uh, I read, I think, all of them, at least the ones uh, that I could see in my various social media platforms. Thank you so much. It touches me a lot to receive such uh, wonderful, kind, and sweet words from so many of you. I wish you all a great weekend. And if you've not found your special one, he or she may be just around the corner. Cheers, everybody.